Welcome back to Good Morning Idaho. All right, we've all been talking about it, right? Dale Dixon with it's the Better true. Business Bureau is here to talk about. Hello. Hello. What happened at Target? We know anyone <laughs> who used a credit or a debit card there in the past month or so uh, is worried. Yes. But you're saying don't panic <clears throat> that you may not be liable for fraudulent charges and, and that sort of thing. Exactly. Right? Okay. Yeah. 40 million people, 40 Ugh. million credit cards. I, I call it seeing the light of day. We like to keep that credit card number hidden while well, somebody hacked into the system got a hold of those card numbers and so now there's a lot of work being done to get those accounts closed up and people's money protected. So closed up. So yeah. is that what you're recommending people do if they shop the Target or, or what, are, what are you recommending to people? At this point, number one, don't panic okay. and realize and I'll, and I'll, in full transparency, we haven't shopped at Target, but last week my bank called saying somehow your number was compromised and we're going to shut your account down. Okay. Uh, the key not a there, call you want to get. Not, you, not a call you want to yeah, get, but you yeah. know what? In this digital age, it's important to know that, number one, the hackers are constantly working, trying to find a weak link in the system that they can infiltrate and get a hold of numbers. I mean, it's, it's just a constant. The rare thing is something like target where they actually find success hmm. but it's important to know that they're always always working and so don't panic we're wa recommending people watch those accounts very very closely okay so credit is one thing is there any difference with debit cards anything specific there yeah with debit cards you don't have as much protection as you do your credit card and so if you used a debit card it, at all it is important that you're constantly watching that account and you know I, I talked to a lot of fraud investigators from banks and I'll never forget the conversation I had with one fraud investigator and I said so how do you protect yourself I mean you see this day in and day out what do you do right because you know it's pretty simple I have a bowl of oatmeal every morning and while I'm eating my oatmeal, I open up that laptop and I look at my bank accounts mm. and I'm looking for anything that's out of the ordinary. So I thought, so well, daily? Daily. Yeah. yeah daily. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? If it works for a fraud investigator, it'd probably work for the rest of us as well. Yep, absolutely. So there are <coughs> concerns you're saying, though, too, for people who didn't even shop at Target necessarily. Yeah. Right? So, so now what will happen is the bad guys will come in behind after all this news and they'll send out emails with the Target logo saying that your account may have been compromised. Click uh -huh. here to be yep. sure they will offer you some kind of protection from the fraudster for a price uh, they'll call you on the phone pretending to be target so it's important to realize that if your account was compromised you will have been notified but just like me my bank didn't say we need you to confirm your number tell us who you are right they just called and said your account's been compromised we're closing the account you're gonna have a new card here pretty soon I didn't have to say a word literally they just did it for they you they just did it for me yeah so if you get a phone call from somebody saying hey it's target and we need your account to be sure that it's actually you or they ask for any kind of identifying information hang up the phone that is a big heads up yeah. all right so of course these are the bullet points just yes. make sure yeah act quickly that's a good one too you need to act right away very if quickly if you see something suspicious exactly. right because there's yeah. a time limit on some of this stuff with a debit card yeah you've just uh, you've got less than 60 days in okay. order to get things shut down okay great advice and you'll have all of that at bbb.org and, and welcome back on your monday morning it was a big weekend at the box Jeez. office yeah there was a little bit of something for everyone quite a mix in yeah. theaters we yeah. were trying to go see a movie last night but we couldn't agree on what to see because <laughs> there's just so much out so our movie critic Bob Richards, he's taking a break for the holidays, so he's not in studio, but of course he never leaves us hanging. So here's a look at what he thought of the latest films to hit theaters. The weekend saw the debut of a couple of films that are certain to be mentioned at Oscar time. One of my favorite movies of the year, American Hustle, is a fun, sexy caper comedy. Calling it a comedy might not do it justice, although it is very funny. It's got a wonderful plot with lots of twists and turns, impeccable writing, and terrific characters. Expect to see multiple Oscar nominations. Jennifer Lawrence is a standout among a cast of standouts. It's really a perfect cast. Christian Bale continues to amaze, Amy Adams is stunning, and I love Jeremy Renner. I watched it twice and liked it better the second time around. Hustle to see American Hustle. Five stars out of five. The first movie I ever saw in a theater is Mary Poppins. I have deep emotional ties to it. So naturally, I was excited to see Saving Mr. Banks. It's the story of Walt Disney's wooing of Poppins author P.L. Travers to get the rights to make the film. I wasn't disappointed. Tom Hanks plays Walt, and while he doesn't really look or sound like him, he captures his spirit. But the movie really belongs to Emma Thompson. She, like a spoonful of sugar, makes the medicine go down in a most delightful way. Like Mary, Saving Mr. Banks is practically perfect in every way. Four and a half stars 
out of five. I was less than enamored with Inside Lewin Davis. I didn't like any of the characters. Lewin is a freeloading musician who had a hit once with a partner but is now on his own and is incapable of doing anything but freeloading and angering those he mooches from. I was angry at this human excrement. Some of the music is good, but the mostly humorless story just seems to ramble on aimlessly. No point. It just floats out there, going nowhere. I didn't want to see inside or outside of Lewin Davis, and I don't think you will either. Two and a half stars out of five. Dear Will Farrell, a.k.a. Ron Burgundy, you and I have had many fun times together. I laughed and laughed at your antics. It seemed anything you did made me laugh. Cowbells, old school. I even laughed at that basketball movie. The first anchor man was a hoot, but then you did Land of the Lost. Oh, I threw up in my mouth a little bit. Then Casa de mi Padre. I was full on heaving in the toilet. Now there's Anchorman 2. I was actually looking forward to it, but now I want to do something else in the toilet. Maybe it's you can never go back. Maybe it's just me. I've moved on. You're back there in the toilet and I am, well, here. Not to say I couldn't be back there with you if you made a movie with, you know, some jokes. For now, I think we should see other people. You can go be with the not-so-funny people who think they are, and I'll just be looking for someone who's not you to be in my comedies. I'm over you two stars out of five. My past reviews and more at bobrichardsmoviereviews.com. You can link to it at idahoonyourside.com.